Hello? Okay. So basically, uh, we started uh, looking at the value at risk model to uh, identify the maximum loss particular investment would uh, end up at a future period at a particular confidence level. So that is the uh, importance of value at risk. So that it tells us or that tells uh, risk manager how much your investment portfolio, individual investment is exposed to uh, in terms of uh, volatility over a given period of time in the future at a particular confidence level. So usually, so uh, there are different confidence levels, many uh, uh, risk managers use 95%, 99%, 90% and so on. So uh, a bank can estimate the future uh, loss per any number of uh, days, months or year. So uh, it's usual to calculate the value at risk per a day and then convert it into a period which you look at. Now, if you want to look at a 30-day period, then you have to compute the daily bar and then factor, uh, convert into a monthly bar or maybe whatever the days you want. So that's the import. beauty of this model is, so you can decide the time frame you want and let's say, uh, you invest in a particular asset with the expectation of selling it in 60 months time. So you can uh, model uh, to identify the risk over the next 60 day period. So that is the beauty, right? So there are, uh, we looked at uh, three models uh, that is historical uh, simulation, variance, covariance, and the Monte Carlo simulation. And uh, we were looking at the, uh, I think, uh, uh, variance covariance method, a particular example using statistical application, uh, where we looked at the Microsoft example. Uh, now you can apply it to any stock now, let's say, for example. Now here it's about uh, equity portfolio risk. So you can apply it, put up. Uh, risk management for a uh, you know interest rate risk pricing volatility for a bond portfolio so you can apply for anything any investment so that uh, uh, for equity bonds anything based on the return okay and the volatility so here i think uh, we came up with the answer uh, the uh, value at risk at 99 percent confidence level over the 10 day uh, period is 1,473,623. So that means if you invest uh, in 10 million worth of Microsoft shares over the next 10 days with a 99% uh, confidence, your loss will not be more than this. So you have a benchmark, you know. So you, the, even if there is a loss, this is the maximum that could happen. So you can, if, uh, you know, you can. Uh, have a better forecast about your risk levels, right? So let's move on to the another example, uh, AT and T. Uh, now, if you have a five million portfolio, uh, the daily volatility, that is sigma, is one percent. A ten-day volatility is how much? Because five million into one percent is fifty thousand into root. Uh, 10, so that is, uh, sorry, it should be, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, 1% is 50,000 into root 10 is 158,144, that is 10 day volatility. So why is 10 day volatility times the normal distribution function uh, for 99% confidence level, that is 2.33. So the total, uh, the maximum uh, loss that would end up with your portfolio is 368,405, right? So these uh, formulas we discussed uh, last time and we were looking, discussing this particular question where you have two, port two assets. So uh, when you uh, 
structure the portfolio to assess in different ways how the risk return portfolio changes now i think we discussed the first four first structure that is uh, the, the portfolio consists of 25% of the asset one and 75% of the asset two so you see uh, uh, then uh, the portfolio return is 6.25 and 9.01 now then uh, when you change the structure of the portfolio from weightage uh, you see now the y portfolio it's a equal weight 50 50 z portfolio 75% of asset 1 and 25% of asset 2 so when you look at the three portfolios the significant change you see is uh, asset 1 uh, component is increasing asset 2 component is uh, the percentage is decreasing so what do you see when the asset one portion is increased and asset two portion is uh, decreased what do you see in terms of return and volatility what do you see hmm what you can see uh, in terms of uh, volatility and return come on come on because you have to i mean if you can't answer what you see then uh, you can't answer anything so this is what you see in the board just uh, express your views so what do you see when the portfolio weightages changes like this in asset 1 increase and asset 2 decrease what do you see the outcome what is happening with the outcome anyone when the weight in asset 2 increases and the weight in asset 1 decreases uh, the portfolio return increases i think you came up with a wrong way you said portfolio asset 2 increases and portfolio weight of asset 1 uh, decreases return increases is that what you see no uh, sorry the other way okay so uh, Remember in the exam, don't make mistakes like this. You have to be very conscious of what you say. So here, what is asset one? Weight of asset one increases and weight of asset two decreases. Then portfolio return has increased. And also, what is the other observation? So that is one observation. What is the other observation? I mean, you should be able to express what you observe, not even your calculation. So, what do you observe? So, if you are given a scenario, you must be able to explain it. I think senior banks must, bankers must be, you know, thorough with what you see. Now, say for example, customer comes, somebody you are, you are junior person, gives some data analysis, analyzed by you for a particular corporate customer. So, he tells R O R O A this much, R O A. Then, then what you what what is your job as a senior manager? so you have to interpret the results so analyst or computer will give you the numbers but and the interpretation you have to do okay what has happened what what is the result what will be what is the tells uh, you and then finally we to need to make a decision so what do you see what is the second observation it is portfolio standard deviation also increases when weighting asset 1 increases and weighting asset 2 decreases okay. so these are two observation you can see here you can observe these two thing clearly whenever the weightage in the asset one in the portfolio increases and weightage in the asset two portfolio decreases two things you can observe in this particular question portfolio return has gone up standard deviation also gone up okay now let me ask the next question why do you think what is the reason for that or what could be the possible reason for that 
again you can observe interpret it from the data given why that happens because the return in asset 1 is higher than the return of asset 2 and standard yeah. deviation also okay. oh that is because of return of the asset 1 is greater than asset 2 so when you have more in more in asset 1 in the portfolio naturally your overall return will be higher but even though you get a higher return, that is associated with a higher risk as well. Because the, port, the asset one also have a higher volatility. Standard deviation is 20% as compared to the 10%. So that is the important point. Okay, you get the return. Okay. Higher return, but also end up with a higher risk. So this factor you have to be mindful. Okay. So why this is important because as a risk manager you can you know you can decide not the optimal way for you within your risk tolerance limit okay now always uh, the i mean what is your bottom line from a bank's point of view or even an individual point of view you know you make an investment what is your bottom line whether it's a bank, corporate entity, anybody, what is the bottom line? Even yourself, if you make investment, what is your bottom line? That is a common thing for anybody. What is the bottom line? A bank, corporate entity, as an individual, anybody, when you make an investment, what is the bottom line? Our net return, portfolio return. Sorry, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, please, please. Our, our net return. Uh, first part I missed. Portfolio return. Yeah, but what, what, return what? To get the maximum return. To get the? Maximum return. Exactly. So your bottom line is to get the maximum return. Okay, you, your bottom line is to get the maximum as a banker when you, at the end of the year, it is what you are looking at. Your board will look at, okay, what is my return on equity? What is my return on asset? What is my profitability, gross margin, net margin, any business? So the bottom line is to get the maximum return. But there's a question. What is the question? So you have a target return, but can I achieve this target return? So what is the hurdle for that? Standard deviation also a little high when the return is expected high. So, uh, I have just asked a simple question. Don't uh, link it to uh, this particular question. So when you target a maximum return, what is the hurdle for that? So you target this much. What is the hurdle? In, I mean, anybody can, I mean, simple one word you can tell. What is the hurdle? Market changes. Huh? Market changes. Uh, Market. One word you can tell. What is the hurdle for that? Risk is the hurdle. Risk. The hurdle is the risk. Yeah. Right? So the hurdle is the risk. So you target something. Okay, I want uh, now your uh, big bosses will target. Okay, this year I must get a 15% ROE. Okay, when you make an investment, you may target. Okay, my return on uh, investment, I am targeting at least 20%. But, so that is your target. But there is no guarantee you will get that 20%. Because of the market fluctuations of market periods adversely against your forecast. So that is what market risk management. So the risk. So the problem is the risk. 
So we don't know what would be the risk. So you have identified risk, but actual risk may be, deviation may be different. So then it is important for you, when you look at the historical, now all these are historical, no? All these return and risk are historical. So based on the historical return, you have some judgment about the risk element. So that's what we have done. If you have this export polio, your return would be with 6.25 and standard deviation 9.01. If the portfolio is X, that is 50-50, you end up with a higher return, but also with a higher risk. If you have a structure like this, Z, you end up with a very much higher return, but again end up with a uh, higher uh, risk. So as a risk manager, so you can decide within your tolerance limit, what is the best possible uh, portfolio I should uh, structure for asset one, asset two. Whether it's 25, 25, whether it's 30, 70, whether it's 40, 60, whether it's 60, 40, whether it's 70, 30, whether it's 80, 20, 20, 80. So you can decide whether uh, if it is within your tolerable limit. So that's the importance of uh, risk. Uh, and also when you uh, you can build a value at risk also for your total investment value using portfolio standard deviation. So you can measure the value at risk of the entire portfolio as well, like what you did you do for individual stock. Now the, the ZX, to look at ZX for the first one is, I mean, I have given the calculation using this formula, the formula. Sigma squared P, so that is what we have done in the last part, right? Uh, 9.01. So you can get the same way 11.18 and 15.21. Okay, so now consider a portfolio consists of now we are moving back to the first uh, two examples uh, Microsoft and ATLT. Uh, so there's a portfolio comprising of two and assume correlation coefficient that is rho. Now remember, we looked at uh, rho here. Uh, rho is uh, here uh, covariance uh, between the two variables divided by individual standard deviation. So also rho is uh, 0 0.3. And now look at uh, the standard deviation of the uh, portfolio x and y. x is uh, Remember, standard deviation of X is 200,000, standard deviation of Y is 50,000, right? So, for the portfolio, uh, if the row is 0 0.3, so you can use this uh, formula for the portfolio, uh, so that the portfolio uh, standard deviation would be 220,227. Now, uh, let's look at the uh, value at risk. So 10 day, 99% more. Remember, uh, when you have individual stocks, 10 day of y is uh, uh, 368405, for X is uh, 1473621. So if we work out uh, the var 10 day, 99% equal for the portfolio, <coughs> because portfolio standard division we compute 222.27 times root 10 because 10 deva times 2.33. So that comes to uh, 1622653. See? So, but let's look at how the portfolio, when you add the numbers in the portfolio, the risk will be reduced, come uh, reduced to some extent. Remember now uh, when we Looked at the individual var. Now, individual var of this one is 1473621. This one is 368405. So, just take the vars individually add together. So, what would be the var? Total var is 1473621 plus 36405. Okay. So, that is much higher than the combined var by 219,369. So this tells us some another important thing. So when you keep a stock individually, 
okay definitely you are exposed to much higher risk than the, when you combine with a proper portfolio of other assets so when you combine so that is the diversification now diversification means rather than concentrating on one asset you have several assets in your portfolio which will result in the combined risk is much less than if you take them on an individual basis so this is how we I can mathematically prove that uh, scenario we know that diversification is good for reducing risk but how it happens we can see mathematically uh, with this example right any more questions so this is the technique we use in a variance for variance analysis because it's based it's a parametric analysis not like historical uh, simulation which is based on again here the historical data is used but we use a uh, sigmas uh, and the mean returns for computation of value at this right okay so if you don't have any questions let's move on to the <coughs> next part okay uh <coughs> now uh, model building approach that is uh, the variant for variant which we just discussed so what are the advantages easy to compute take into account four relations the disadvantages requires that individual asset returns to be normally distributed okay so we make an assumption that is the individual asset returns are normally distributed right uh, also method assume asset returns standard deviation uh, and correlations are constant okay but uh, unfortunately if the asset returns are not normal distributions the results that may we end up with may not exactly right okay uh, not easily measured for portfolios with options because return distribution of such portfolios are highly skewed non linear payoffs okay so if a portfolio with uh, several options then again you can't use uh, i mean there may be disadvantage I mean, you can use but there may be a disadvantage uh, of interpreting the results right okay so let's move on to the third method so rather than you will understand in detail when you uh, do the questions so even though we tells it's not easy to absorb but when we do the questions definitely you will uh, get it much clear so now uh, let's move, move on to the monte carlo simulation which is again uh, computer modeling uh, so what we do is to calculate y using monte carlo simulation we uh, value portfolio today so basically we get the value of the portfolio today in terms of whatever return or whatever and sample once from the multivariate distribution of the change in the variable so we can sample uh, a multivariate distribution came from the change in return use the change in return to determine market variables at end of one day so so you take a particular day then you forecast using multivariate distribution function for return end of another day one day then you can do it for many other days two days three days whatever and then revalue the portfolio at the end of the day so then there after you revalue the portfolio at the end of the day you will understand when we do a question so that's what we do in the monte carlo simulation so uh, we change the delta p the change in price 
repeat many times to build up a probability distribution for change in price so the, the, the we run a simulation to identify the different ways of change in price is a like say now let's say today price is let's say 5 rupees we run a simulation 1000 times to see whether tomorrow what would be the tomorrow's price we can run for 10000 we can run for 25000 times for 1 million times of time to come up with the different scenarios then why is the appropriate fractile of the distribution times square root of n right so for example uh, 100 trial the 1% trial is the 10th worst case If you run thousand trials for return, one percent trial is the tenth worst case. One percent uh, of thousand, right? So another advantage, flexibility. So ability to determine the type of distribution. So here, the system itself from the model to identify particular distribution. There's a flexibility, and the numerical parameter values of the distribution. also comes with the system general by the system so uh, the other advantage is you can use the data for analyze the non linear as well as linear risk a non linear mean non normal distance distribution as well as linear distributions like normal distributed returns more likely to generate outlier possibilities than good historical analysis which are referred to as the disaster scenario also could end up with very outlier scenarios Okay, so those could be considered as disaster scenarios. Okay, when you run different trials, so those are advantages: flexibility, uh, able to analyze for non-linear, non-linear as well as linear risk, and generate outlier possibilities. So the risk advantage, the required the risk analyst. to develop appropriate valuation models for the assets in a particular in a portfolio and to specify realistic values for the parameters of the random variables constrained in the model so recently to develop appropriate valuation models for the assets in the portfolio and to specify realistic values for the parameters of the random variables otherwise it is like garbage in garbage out so no point of getting uh, i mean there's no point of the results you get it requires more computer time and power and more analyst judgment so you need more computer time and power computer time and power and analyst judgment why more time because you can run uh, you have to run a number of trials okay so uh, the, if you run many trials as per principle then you have an advantage because uh, uh, few trials will not give a proper result right because it is based on random number generation different returns of the process on the same parameters can produce different results so because random number of trials so sometimes you may end up with different paths but uh, but those are very <coughs> marginal with a marginal deviation if you run uh, several number of trials right so let's move to the final part of evaluatory modeling uh, the important of uh, modeling is uh, to test the models you use with the actual results <coughs> so this is back testing we call back testing this is a common technique for any modeling not just a war modeling so if you have any model even duration model now we need to do back testing so what is back testing now back test compare the realized trading result with model generated risk measures now let's say you use a particular duration model to forecast the market risk so then uh, after let's say uh, now you want to forecast the your bond portfolio values or whatever using uh, value at risk model or whatever model so after 3 months actual date you will see what could be the result the actual result then you can compare with 
what did you forecast using the model three months before? So you see, there could be a deviation, but it's not a significant deviation. The model is right. Actuals and this uh, forecasted three months before, almost same. If you see there's a significant difference, then some, there's something wrong with the model. So you have to evaluate the new model, okay? Uh, reassess the accuracy of the existing models, okay? Uh, or you have to change whatever the changes you need to do for the existing model. So the banks using internal VAR models for market risk capital requirement must backtest their models on a regular basis. <laughs> because the, the model, when you build a model, the model is based on some data prevailed at a particular time. But as time moves on, the what you call the changes in the market variables for different factors may be different. You see? Different. So, uh, so you have to revalidate the models, whether the model captures the current environment. Otherwise, you will end up with a model error, model risk. There is a risk called model risk aspect. I credit market liquidity, there's what is called model risk. Model risk is the internal model you use to forecast whatever the risk related to your bank may not give the right result. Okay. So this can happen. So you can do a uh, back testing to see whether your model is perfectly working well, right? So banks backtest stress models on a monthly or quarterly basis to verify accuracy. Observe whether trading results fall within the pre-specified confidence bands as predicted by the VAR models. If the models perform poorly, establish cause for poor performance. Okay, so identify what is the reason. Check integrity of the position, market data, model parameters, and the methodology. Even uh, certain parameters you use in a model may not be valid at the moment. So they are the, and you may need to add new parameters to the method. So you have to take away the, take out the existing parameters and bring in the new parameters so that those will uh, give a better picture. So you have to work out, uh, do the back testing and see what is happening. And also check the methodology which you use for uh, build this particular model. I think with that we can conclude the uh, value at risk modeling part, and we can move on to some questions. Uh, are there any questions? Are there any questions? Okay, so if you don't have a question, let's move on to the question. Can you all see this? Yes, sir. Okay. So I think it's working time for all of us. So please get ready with laptops. Now go to Excel sheet. Create Excel sheet. The first historical simulation exercise we are going to do now. To compute the worst case scenarios using the historical simulation model. So please open Excel sheets, create Excel sheet in your laptops. And copy these data you have given, 
just simply uh, about 30 data points. Can you all see the data I have given? Can you see the data? Yes, sir. Sorry? Uh, can you see? You can. Can you see? Can. 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 Okay. So why don't you uh, take down this data in your Excel sheet uh, particular rows? Now, I have given A2, A3, and so on, 70, 51, 71. Uh, once you okay, come up to 23, I will go down. So please uh, enter this data into your worksheet. Everybody has to do this. Otherwise, you don't practice. So we are trying to do a historical simulation, very basic example. So copy this data to Excel sheet you create. Once you finish up to 23, 23rd line, Pro, please tell me so there are some more data in the uh, below level so I can I get those. Okay, now can you see it now? Can you see? Can you all see? Yes, sir. Okay, now copy all the data you can see now. Sorry. Uh, Now it's all the data points are here. So there are 30 data points, 70, 51, 71, 59. So please uh, input these data onto your Excel sheet, column A. So it start from row two, going up to row 31. And once you finish entering, please tell me.
Okay, okay, you entered all the data points? Oh, up to 31. Sorry? Up to cell number 31. 31, okay. So, so we have 30 data points. Okay. The first one, 70, 51, 71, 59, 92, 83, 63, 62, 91, 72, 55, 54, 95, 56, 68, 83, 93, 64, 52, 57, 59, 82, 86, 94, 61, 72, 56, 97, 81, 70. Right? Check again whether you entered rightly because otherwise you may end up with different answers. Okay. Okay, everybody. One, I think, uh, one has completed. What about others? Done, sir. All have done. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now keep this uh, one uh, Excel sheet saved because you. This is the only thing that you will remain in your books because uh, you should be able to work out anything based on the uh, this this uh, you know ex, uh, exercise, right? Now assume these are the last 30 day prices of a investment security. Now assume simple a stock A. So you have invested in a stock A, your bank. Now these are last 30 days return. Okay. Now the second step is we are going to calculate the daily return, daily returns of this stock. Right? Daily returns. Now how do you, uh, now you Usually, when you look at the return, you use the log normal function. Log normal function, the, the log normal means natural log function. So there are two logs. Even if you look at the, your calculator, there are two log functions. What are the two log functions? Even if you look at a calculator, calculator, you have two log functions. What are those two? Have you used a calculator before in your life at least one day? Bankers, I doubt whether no one has used because I think every banker should have used at least one time in your life. Have you used a, a calculator in your life at least one day? No. So no one has used a calculator in your life today. Silence means that. Yes, sir. We use it. Yeah, use. It's rather doubtful that if you are not. So, what are the two two log functions you have seen in a calculator? So, this is not not relevant to this particular question, but I am asking is uh, because of the return. Next question, we will use the log function. What are the two? Log functions in the calculator. If you have a calculator, please have a look. I don't have a calculator with me. What are the two log functions? Natural log function and log function with base 10. Those are the two. Haven't you seen those two in your calculator? Natural log function and log with base 2. Sorry, sorry, base 10. Base 10. Haven't you seen those two? No? You need not have a finance calculator. Normal calculator, scientific calculator. And to see natural log function and log with base 10. I don't know whether what is what do you have in a scientific calculator, what I have seen. Unless the bankers have a different scientific calculator. No one has seen. 
natural log function and the log with the base 10. Can someone show me the uh, calculate? I can tell you. Can someone, uh, I don't know anybody, show me, then I can at least tell us what is that. I think that is there. Anyone see? Okay, anyway, have a look at that form because I, can, I can't show it to you here. Uh, you have a ln function and log 10 function and base base is 10 okay okay forget about that but now in this particular exercise we are not going to use the natural uh, log for the calculation uh, that is the usual way of return calculation but we use the simple return calculation so what is the simple return of an investment when you are given price how do you calculate the simple return How do you calculate simple return? What is the first day return? First day return means the second uh, row. First day return, how much? The box here, how much the return? Can someone tell? Now these are the prices. Column A is the prices. Now we are going to compute the returns because that is our uh, concern. So, what is the first day return? Simple return. Can someone tell? How do you get it? Okay, tell me how do you get it? 70 into square root of 1. Huh? 70? Into square root of 1. Uh, I don't know. I'm asking the simple return, not the, you know, because this is price now. You are, you are, I think you are looking at the volatility function. Okay. Return. How do you compute the return? I mean, these are simple things. I mean, it is not a bank. Anybody can not say you uh, put some money today and tomorrow uh, money in the stock case 70 and tomorrow it is 75. How do you get the return? Simple return. Today you invest in a stock 70, tomorrow it will got, go up to 75. So what is your return? How do you get time? It's not uh, difficult. 70, 70 into interest rate divided by 36,500. Sorry? 70 into interest rate divided by 36,500. Okay, I will repeat the question. You invest in a share, whatever, let's say take a it's pretty simple. You invest in share 70 rupees today. Okay, one, one share. Tomorrow the share price is 75. So what is your return? 75 minus 5. 75. Okay, can, can, I think, can someone, uh, one five. person tell? Okay, first one, I there's a uh, little bit, uh, you know, uh, Someone started with uh, 70 times, 75 times, can, can, I can't even, I can't see her. So, can uh, one uh, test and then we can move to the other one. Who started first? I can't see, you know. 75 minus 70, it's 5. Okay, 75 minus 70. So, if you put it in a, a little bit uh, comfortable way, Anjali. Okay, return is 5, but... More professional way. Um, when you express things, uh, return. Uh, the price which we sell today minus the price that we bought. Yeah, that is the absolute return. You are right. But to, to take a percentage term, 75 minus 70 divided by. 
Once you finish the return for that day, please tell me how much. Minus zero point two seven. Sorry. Minus zero point two seven. Zero point two seven. Let's see. Minus zero point. Minus zero point two. Minus zero point two seven. Right. So can you uh, repeat it for the rest of the returns? Rest of the returns. Oh, so the third third row minus zero point two seven. So can you repeat it for the up to the thirty one thirty uh, first row? You can do it easily. How do you do it? Done. Done. Huh? Just copy the formula and drag it. You can drag the formula down. So this is not a finance uh, evaluatory modeling, uh, Excel working sheet working with. So you simply drag down the uh, formula. So automatically, data sheet will you give you these returns. So the next return is 0.39 positive, and so on. You will get this column B data. So please uh, drag down the first day return, and you will get this data, right? Okay. Once you do this, please tell me because we we have to go together uh, so that you come with the right numbers. All of you have done Excel. I think that is now like the A level. You know, everybody does Excel in A level, like but we did it in university in uh, you know late eighties, early nineties. But all of you have now. I think most of you do in the Uh, I think uh, children do in the O level, so A level. So Excel is not a new thing. All of you work in the Excel at your offices. So please drag down the first day return. Is simply A three minus A two divided by A two. 
In percentage, without percentage terms, it has been negated. You can convert into percentage by multiplication of 100. So you must get column B data. Okay, once you get finished that, please tell me because uh, we need to go to the next step. If this Excel sheet uh, works with you, save it so that uh, you can do it for any question. Okay, done. Thank you. Uh, everybody got the column B data? I have given the data, so these are the data you should get. If you don't uh, get, please uh, check because we can't move on. If you get wrong data, then uh, you can't do the rest of the thing. So everybody should get this data. <coughs> So let me ask this question. Anyone has not got yet? Please tell me because we have, if, if everybody stays silent, I assume you have done and I will move to the next uh, part. Anyone is still working or not got the data yet? Still doing the Excel calculation? Please tell me. Okay, so that means everybody got. Okay, now go to the column C. Now in the column C, what I have done is rearrange this data from ascending order. What is ascending order means? Bankers? Huh? From uh, small to higher, higher. Okay, small number to higher number. So that means lowest return to the highest return because this column B is the return. Now put them in the column C again and uh, arrange them in a ascending order. That is from the lowest return to the highest return. So can you do that please? Again you can use the function. There is an ascending order function here in the Excel sheet.
So you should get column C data. Because if you look at this column B, the lowest return is negative uh, 0.41. That means the loss loss of 0.41. Highest is 73 here. 0.76. So highest is 76. So please rearrange from the lowest return to the highest return. Column C is that. So create the column C now. Once you finish, please tell me. Still, we have not come to the uh, question, I mean, simulation part, but we are just working out the basic things. So if you rearrange rightly, you should get like this way, minus 0.41, minus 0.35, minus. So you see, you know, that the lowest return, then it's gradually improving. Highest return is 0 0.76 positive. So from this, you can see the worst thing that can happen, that has happened in a particular day with the worst return is the stock has ended up with a negative uh, 0.41, that is 41%, loss of 41%. And also in a particular day, the highest return, the stock has moved up by 76%, that is uh, the value, 76%. So, so this is the worst, this is the best. So the, uh, the returns of the other days has varied between days two, minus 0.41 and plus 0.76, right? So, have you got the column C? Yes. Okay. Everybody got the column C? Okay, so I can't. Uh, so yes. let, me, let me put this there. Yes, anyone, did, anyone didn't got, get the column C? Please tell. Anyone still didn't get the column C? Okay, no. So that means everybody has got the column C. Now, let's move on to a calculation. Okay, now you can do uh, two things. I mean, this is not historical, but uh, if you use the normal distribution, okay, normal distribution, you can compute the mean return. You can compute the mean return. Anyway, keep, uh, calculate these two and keep for yourself for further any other information. So what is the mean return of this 30-day data period? Mean return is the mean of this 29 data points of returns. The mean return is 0 0.04. You can compute using the, uh, this function. And standard deviation of return, of also you can use this Excel sheet standard deviation, is 0 0.32. So this is the mean and uh, standard deviation of the returns. Okay. Okay, let's move on to the historical one.
Okay. Now, assume we want to compute the daily VAR, daily VAR at 95% confidence level. 95%, right? 95% confidence level. Okay. So, under historical simulation, we are not using any parametric models. So, we don't use standard deviation and mean for that. Simply, we look at the historical data and look at the worst 5% cases. Right? The 95% confidence means the worst 5% cases. Okay. So, worst 5% return is what in this particular portfolio? Now, how many returns we have in this particular portfolio? How many returns? How many returns? Huh? How many returns we have in this particular, sorry, uh, exercise? Only one stop. How many returns we have? 29. 29. Because we computed, we looked at 30 days, prices of 30 days, and computed 29 returns. Okay, so these are the 29 returns in the column B. So now we want to compute the 95% confidence historical simulated bar. So 95% confidence means we want to look at 5% worst cases, last 5% cases. So if we have 29 returns, what is the last 5% cases? Last 5% case. 1.45 return. 5% of 29 items. Okay. The worst. 5% means 29 data items. 5% means which return? 5% of 29 is 1.45. So we want to look at the bottom, the, 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 the lowest return, which is lying at the 1.45. But this is a decimal factor. We don't have 1.45 return. So the first, what is the first lowest return? What is the minus first? Minus 0 0.41. What is the second lowest return? Minus 0.35. Minus 0.35. So if we want to compute, now this is, first of this is a mathematical part. If you want to compute the verse 1.45, where it should be lying between this one and this one, right? Is that right? 1.45 lies between the first and second return, first and second worst case return, right? So we do some mathematical adjust. So what is the First return is minus 0.41. The second return is 0.35. So we can compute mathematical interpolation. That is the first return plus second return minus first return times fraction. That is here fraction is 0.45. Right? So you will end up with minus 0.38. Got it?
Okay. Everybody got the bottom one point four point return. Everybody got? So how to get bottom 5%? Sorry? That 1.45 that is uh, the 1.4 feet return because the, we are looking at the 95 percent confidence level now. So 90, when you look at 95 confidence level mean, we are looking at the 5 percent worst cases, worst 5 percent cases, right? 95 percent confidence level means we are looking at the worst 5 percent cases. If you look at 99 percent confidence level, you are looking at worst 1 percent cases. If you look at 90% confidence level, you, you are looking at worst 10% cases. So that is the worst case losses. Okay. So 95% confidence level, we look at the worst 5% cases. Now here we have 29 returns. So we want to look at worst 5% of that 29. So what is the worst 5% of 29 mean? 1 point, now if you look at the, we won't look at a particular return, no? Worst return. If you look at 100, 100 returns, okay, you have 100 data points in a return. Then if you want to look at worst 5%, what is the worst 5% is the fifth return, worst fifth return, right? So here out of 29, 5% means 1.4 fifth. Now, I, I wanted to show you a you know fraction because then you will learn that also, but if you get a whole number, this is not a big problem. So out of 29, verse 5% return means 29 into 5%, 1.45 return, right? Verse 1.45 return, got it? But here, we don't have 1.4 fifth return, no. We have first return, second return, third return, up to 29 return. So in order to get the 1.4 fifth return, the definitely 1.4 fifth return should be something in between these two, no. The worst first return is 0.41, worst second return is 0.35. So 1.4 fifth is return something lies between these two. So we got it through interpolation, like this. So you can compute for anything. If you want to look at 1.6 return, you can do in the same way. Here is 0.6. So you should, your worst 1.4, sorry, worst 5% return is 0.38. So that means you are 95% confidence your loss on a particular day, because we looked at the daily prices, A will not be more than 38%. Right? So let me ask a question. <laughs> you have invested 20 million in this particular stock. If you have invested 20 million, what is the 10 day wa?
What is the Tendeva? <clears throat> we have invested 20 million in this particular stock. What is the Tendeva with 95% confidence level? I can't hear you this time. Uh, yeah, tell me again. I can't hear some noise coming. Uh, 20? 20,821.92. Again, with the, now, the noise, I can't hear you. You can uh, ask your maybe children to little be, you know, silent then and tell it's okay. When you speak, I hear the background noise as well. 20,000? Can someone tell? See, if you are invested 20,000 or maybe, okay, let's say 20,000 in this particular stock uh, asset, let's say asset. So what is the, uh, what is the uh, value at risk with 95% confidence level over the 10 day period? Ten day period under the historical simulation because we are working with the historical simulation. We are not using any parametric, uh, you know, uh, parametric variables. How much? 20,000 into 38% into root 10. 20,000 into 38% into root 10. The maximum loss that could happen for your investment over the next 10 day period with 95% confidence level. Clear? Can we move on to the next uh, calculation? 90% calculation? Are there any questions? Okay. So now let's move on to, we want to compute the historical VAR at 90% confidence level. So 90% confidence level means you are looking at you are looking at 10% worst cases. 90% confidence means you are looking at 10% worst cases out of 29 items returns. So 10% of 29 is the 2.9 return this part. 2.9 return. So there is no 2.9 return because we have a second return, third return. If you want to, without doing uh, interpolation, you can assume 2.9 return is the closest to the third return. So in that case, if you assume 2.9 return and take the closest number, that is the third return, so our worst case 
10% return is 0.31. But if you don't want to do very precise and interpolation, the interpolation, we know the second return is 0.35 here. We know the third return, third worst return is 0.31. So we can do the interpolation 0.35 plus 0.31 minus 0.35 negative, all this negative, into 0.9 because we want to look at the 2.9 return. So your exact 2.9 worst case return is loss of 32%. This one almost similar, uh, close to the 31% that is third return. Right. So, if you want to compute, so what's it into 0.9? Sorry. How it comes? Sorry. It's into 0.9 now. How it comes? 0.9 is 10% uh, of 29. We want to look at the 2.9 item. Bottom 10% of the returns. So bottom 10, 90% confidence level means we want to look at the bottom 10%. 95% earlier means bottom 5%. So we're going to look at the worst 10, uh, worst return at that point. So 10% out of 29 returns is 2.9. So we want to look at the 2.9 return. But let's say now we, have two, we don't have 2.9, no, we have 1, 2, 3. If you approximate, now usually if it is closer to either the uh, this way or that way, you can take number. So the 2.9 return is uh, close to the third return. So basically, third return is 0.31. So you can assume uh, with 90% confidence level, maximum loss would be 31%. But if you use the exact position using interpolation, it is 0 0.032, right? So the maximum loss is 32% with 90% confidence level on a given day. If you want to look for a 10 day period, you have 20,000 investment. So your maximum loss would be 20,000 into 32% root 10. So that in that way, you can compute the maximum loss for any given confidence level. Now, to give a little bit clarity now, uh, someone asking again this, how did you get? Uh, now, let's say if you have 200 return data, <clears throat> 200 data points, returns like this, 200. So you are looking at historical simulation, 95% confidence level. Okay, you are looking at 95% confidence level, you have 200 data points. Now here we have only 29. So what is the data point you should look at? If you have 200 daily returns, 200 daily returns, and you are focusing on 95% confidence level, what is the worst case return you should look at? What data point? Uh, last 10. Sorry? Last 10. Last 10th uh, data point. 10 data points. 10th data point. Because 95% uh, confidence level means you look at the worst 5%. The worst 5% case means if you have 200 data points, 5% of 200, the 10th item. So you have to look at the return of the 10th item. Let's say return of the 10th item is uh, 0.31, so that is the value at risk. Okay, I'll ask one more question. If we have 500 data points, 500 data points, you are looking at 99% confidence level. Which data point you should look at? That's 5, 5, 5 returns. Not last 5. 
द फिफ्थ डेटा पॉइंट फिफ्थ डेटा पॉइंट बिकॉज एनीथिंग बिलो फिफ्थ डेटा पॉइंट आर द वर्स्ट केसेस सो यू हैव टू लुक फॉर द रिटर्न ऑन द फिफ्थ डेटा पॉइंट राइट Yeah, because we are we are rearranging the data on a worse to highest case basis, and historical simulation. That's why it's pretty simple. Anybody can do it. So don't have to look at the um, parametric values. Very simple. Okay. Any questions? right got it here yeah. okay let me uh, move on to little bit uh, variance covariance analysis very simple now in the variance covariance model we simply use the mean and standard deviation of the returns now earlier i said the mean return is of this set is 0.04 standard deviation is 0.32 to compute the 95% confidence level that is bottom 5% we can use this distribution function norm in v parametric model here the confidence was 5% B35 means the mean. B36 means the standard deviation. You ended up with bottom five percent return of 0.48. Similarly, 90% confidence level to change this one. We ended up with thirty percent, thirty-six percent return. So, what do you see? What do you see? What do you see? What do you see? What is your observation? What do you all see? Okay, please calculate this first using this function, and see whether you get the result. Also, this. Did you get this result using this function? How many of you got it? Please work out.
sorry sorry for that uh, so the, the mic was off uh, so what do you see my question was uh, what do you see from these two pisas so this is uh, the results using historical simulation this is the results using uh, variance covariance that is parametric numbers so the obvious thing you can see is these numbers are different so if you use historical simulation at 90% confidence level your worst case loss is 32% but if you use parametric model using this mean and return uh, mean deviation and the uh, return mean and the standard deviation of the returns you end up with 36% loss similarly if you look at 95% confidence level historical simulation which we computed here your loss maximum loss with 95% confidence is 38% but if you look at variance covariance parametric model you end up with 48 Percent. So the obviously these two are different. So what could be the reason for that? What could be the reason for that? Yes, Mr. Bodhini, what is the reason? what could be the reason anything you want to say no sir no ha huh? no no i will see anyone else anybody want to tell something what are the things which that what could are, what could be the reasons for this difference what could be the reason for difference there could be many things but uh, like uh, you can see uh, the other girl who always tells at least someone is there can you see Awesome. Because we use the interpolation method. Ah, Anjali. No, something else. We looked at in the theory. So we call your theory, Anjali. Now is that not not because of interpolation? Now, what is the rationale behind the parametric model? Distribution. We assume. Yeah, we we assume a normal distribution, linear normal distribution function, right? So that is what we assume. But historical simulation, we don't assume anything. Just simply, we can look at the worst. If it is ninety-five percent, we looked at the worst five percent. If it is ninety percent, we looked at the worst ten percent. and we simply use in the data sheet we computed the return so there are no any parametric uh, variables we looked at we simply look at what is the worst 5% what is the worst 10% if you 99% what is the worst 1% and looked at that return but in the parametric model we went by the two key now uh, variables that is the mean and the standard deviation and computed these in doing so if you recall your theory we assume normal distribution function here yeah, itself says normal distribution here yeah, normal distribution okay so if the assumption is not right this error could arise so that's why don't worry about this number i have computed statistical numbers from this data 
Now there is what is called cortosis. Can you see cortosis? Yeah. Can everyone see? Cortosis. This is something I can calculate. Don't worry about that uh, for your calculation. What is cortosis? Can you see this cortosis? Can no, cannot. Please tell. Can see. Can minus uh, zero point one six. Exactly. Yeah. So what is cortosis? Now cortosis is measure of normality. Cortosis is a measure of normality. But when you look at this number, if it is the if the, distribu the, 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 the returns are normally distributed, this number should be close to zero, right? But here number is not close to zero. That is the reason we get quite different numbers. Because even though we assume normal distribution function or variable for returns, in this case, they are not really linear normal distribution. These returns are not really normal linear distributed returns. So this you can further see from your normal curve. Is that the shape of a normal distribution curve you see? Is that the shape? No. Sir. Hey, I told you not to do that. Can you come on, please? Don't uh, touch that. Please uh, make your mic uh, silent if you are joining from home, so other disturbances may be there from your home front. Okay, please. Uh, switch off your mic uh, only when you talk please switch on uh, so okay uh, is this the normal distribution uh, curve you see no sir no what is the normal distribution curve we call something special word for that symmetric uh, not no uh, not really symmetric but there's a for the curve we tell something bell shaped bell shaped curve yeah it's not bell shaped there's a skewed, no? This part is right skewed. Right? So you see, uh, there's a positive skewness. Yeah? So that is the reason. Okay? So the problem in uh, various covariance methodology, if you follow in your bank, you have to be pretty sure about the normality distribution assumption. By chance, if your returns, that is generated by the you know particular investment is not normal distributed then the ultimate uh, forecast may go wrong may go wrong so in that context if you can do a historical simulation that is better than the variance covariance analysis but if it is a linear normal distribution you can do the variance covariance analysis as well so uh, you can obviously see this is not a normal curve, it's a little bit skewed. Okay, so you can see from the skewness numbers presented using the data. If you go to the data and you can go to the, you know, normal, uh, what you call data analysis, you can get these, uh, all these data, analyze, you know, data analysis, uh, data tables, all this, which I'm not going to uh, do. Yeah, because uh, you can do. But my our task is whenever a data set is given, you have to compute the return. You can compute the uh, historical var for any confidence level, and you can if you, look, if you take the daily var, you can convert into a monthly var, seven day var, or any number of period var. Okay. Any questions? Anything you need to clarify? Okay. So we have to have another question. Let me see whether
okay uh, so we will stop for that uh, break the break and we will start with this uh, portfolio analysis that is a uh, not one asset uh, three assets of stocks here again how do you compute the value at risk using the historical simulation and the covariance covariance uh, earlier we looked at the one single asset now here we look at the portfolio so you can do it for anything now here so we'll do after the tea break any questions before we wind up for the tea break <clears throat> all of you should be able to uh, uh, because if you don't have data, you can't work out. It will take time. Can you hear from you all? All of you have uh, access to this worksheet, which we are going to work out. Uh, it is uh, it is under the class work like normal tutor can we hear because otherwise it will take time for you to take the data so that's why we i uh, wanted to put them on the sheet <coughs> anjali yes sir so you can work out from your that worksheet, no? Yes. Ah, okay. So I think all the others should be. So I think we will we will use that worksheet to work. Uh, test of the question. Okay. Uh, so let me move on to the question. Now here this is now earlier <clears throat> question we worked out the uh, value at risk using a single investment, single investment using the daily return, right? Uh, now here now we are going to work out uh, the value at risk of a portfolio that is three now here three stocks now you can expand it to any number of stocks right three five ten whatever this uh, same principle so uh, so here there are three assets the bank of america boeing and another company and you sir uh, bush so where yeah, you have invested 30,000 rupees in, uh, let's say, 30,000 rupees in uh, three stocks, 10,000 each, asset one, asset two, asset three, equal proportion, like 0 0.33, 0 0.33, 0 0.33, right? Uh, so now we want to compute the first historic simulation uh, VAR for different confidence level, and then uh, variance for variance approach. So under the two methods we learn. Okay. Now how do I going to do it? Okay. Okay. Now these are the return. Uh, these are the asset fund uh, prices over the last one year. Last one year. Okay. So we have I think uh, how many data points? Uh, Okay, uh, let's work out. So that is over a 10 year, sorry, one year period. Now these, these are the prices over a one year period. So 406. Three nine about three uh, ninety three ninety three I think three ninety three data points right sorry three seventy three three seventy three data points you have from here onwards three seventy four I think seventy four data points okay so three seventy four data points from uh, date is these are actual data remember. 
these are actual data uh, extracted from the mark, uh, the relevant market with respect to these shares these are not hypothetical now earlier example we just did a hypothetical these are actual data right so this can you can apply for any investment in sri lanka uh, i have selected for easiness uh, the extracting data this one but you can apply it for anything <clears throat> now so what is our first job now first job is to compute the returns because remember last time also first step was to compute the return now these are prices all of these are prices daily prices so now go to this column h column column h and start computing returns i think we have to start from here the return the return of asset 1 return of asset 2 and asset 3 so we have three assets but use the log natural function now earlier remember we looked at the simple return method uh, simple return method to compute the return current return minus previous return divided by previous return but now we can use uh, the normal uh, log natural function that is ln log natural function is ln right so it's simply natural log of this divided by this so that is a simple return i will show you uh, in the worksheet okay so this is you get the simple uh, natural log function now if you look at first first asset first return is here here that is natural log function of b34 this price divided by b33 this price right so go to uh, that one so this one so this one is simply natural log function of b34 divided by b33 and compute the return please do it earlier we did the normal way but usually it's better that uh, natural log function ln Can you work out? So if you work out, you should end up with. This one point zero point zero two six double five. Anyone got this number?
Have you all got the number, first number? Anyone? At least one who have got? Everybody got the number? No? Okay, let me ask anyone who have not got the number? Anyone who haven't got the number? We want to, I want to move. If you don't answer, I will move. Okay. Anyone still doing? Haven't got the number. Okay. So fine. So please copy the same return to the other shells so that you will get these returns. This one, this one this one and so on, you will get the returns. Okay. Then do the same thing for asset two. For asset two, the return is this natural log function of C34 divided by C33. So you get the same like the first asset and copy it. Right? Okay, right. So please do it for the asset three as well. Return equal natural log function D34 divided by D33, you get this one and copy down to the rest of the cells. Right. Anyone who haven't got yet? Anybody who is still working on? Did everybody got the number? Then go to the portfolio return. So what is the portfolio return? Portfolio return is individual return multiplied by the weight. Individual return multiplied by the weight. So this multiplied by 0.33 plus this multiplied by 0.33 plus this multiplied by 0.33. So this is the individual return, sorry, portfolio return on the first day, first day portfolio return.
Now copy that to the rest of the cells. So you get portfolio returns under the column in. So have you got these numbers? Portfolio return. Have you got Have you got the numbers? Anyone? Anyone who haven't got the numbers, please? Oh, anybody who got the numbers? Please raise your hand if you haven't got the numbers. Because you must be thorough with doing this, because otherwise, uh, if you get a question like this in the exam, you will be in trouble. So please get yourself thorough, because uh, we will be completing uh, variance for variance analysis today. Then we move on to the historical simulation. Anything? Please clarify. Don't keep any doubts in your mind, so that if you are given a portfolio and you should be able to kind of compute the returns. And then work out the value at risk under the two models historical simulation and variance for variance analysis. Okay, so everybody got the numbers. Let's move. So now go to column O and compute. Okay, put them like last question. Now this is the these are the returns. Rearrange them in the ascending order. Rearrange them in the ascending order. Okay, rearrange them in the ascending order. So let's work out column O. Put these returns in the ascending order, like last time we did for the question number one. Please here and them in the ascending order.
but the numbers anyone please tell at least somebody has got the numbers i don't know anyone got the numbers ascending order can we hear from someone can someone uh, tell whether they got the numbers yes sir you got the numbers okay Okay, uh, everybody got the numbers. Someone said you got the numbers, huh? Okay, so silence means you got the numbers. So now, please uh, give observation uh, numbers. Observation one. From the worst case observation is the return would be negative 0.21765. Okay. And the best case return would be positive 0.043188, which is the 373rd item. So there are 373 returns here. 373 returns here. Now compute the value. Now here the return percentage. Now the value. Okay. Compute the value. That is the 30,000 multiplied by the return. Okay. 30,000 the total investment value. Multiply by the return. You should get the worst case loss. Worst case daily loss. That has happened is 6,529. So if you invest 30,000 based on the last 373 days return, the worst loss you would have is 6,529. Then it has gradually moved up to the worst. Second loss is 2,503. Worst third loss is this. So likewise, the best that could end up is 1,295. So that means over the last 373 day returns, uh, particular the best scenario you have ended up with a daily return of 1,295 in a particular day. And the worst that has happened is you have ended up with a loss of 6529 so you are the value the return of the value of your return has fluctuated between this and the maximum uh, over this 373 days right now we can use the historical simulation to compute the var 
second. Let me ask this question. If you go by 99% confidence level, to go by 99% confidence level, what is the VA? Historical VA. Without interpolation, you can proxy the relevant item to the closest item without interpolation. Assuming you don't interpolate, you approximate the worst case number to the closest number and take that value as VA. With 99% confidence, what is your VA? Can someone tell? And how do you do it? Can someone tell? What is the 99% confidence? Wow. Without interpolation, with approximation. Can someone tell? How do you compute the VAR? Please tell. We did a question earlier. 99% confidence VAR. How do you do it? Historical simulation. How do you do it? What do you have to do? Can someone tell? Because we did a question. How do you contribute the, com compute the 99% one? Anybody? How do you compute the VAR? Because this is something you should know. Without which, you can't compute any VAR. If you are given a question, how do you compute the VAR? Whether it's a single portfolio asset, single asset or portfolio per set. How do you compute? We did the same thing last question. Here, I am asking you to compute the VAR at 99% confidence level, that is VAR, daily, daily VAR, at 99% confidence level of, the, of this investment portfolio. Ninety-nine percent VAR. I see most of uh, you are not in the class. Most of you are leaving. So all of you are in trouble. If you get a question like this, if you don't follow the classes. 
I can only see 21 in the this thing. So please ensure you follow the classes. Don't come and ask uh, go give you explanations if you fail the exam. Sometimes there may be expect uh, you know Excel sheet workouts this time as well. The last time we had a similar question, but uh, without uh, Excel, uh, I mean practical way, but uh, historical simulation. So there may be portfolio questions. Then you should be able to do it. So if you can't do it, uh, you will lose about 20, 25 marks from what question. Please ensure all of you join the classes, be in the classes, ask questions, and understand. Otherwise, what you know, uh, you will be in trouble. Can't you hear from anybody? How do you do it? 99% what? Confidence level? How do you do it? So if you want to compute 99% what, you should look at the worst 1% of the cases. Earlier, last question we did 95% what, 90% what. When we did the 90% what, we looked at the worst 5%. When we did the 90% more, we looked at the worst 10%. That's how we did last time. So here, 99% more means we look at the worst 1% cases. So what is the worst 1% case here? Which item? Even someone who talks, usually she is also very silent. What is the worst 1% in this particular question? Whereas 1% is because you have 373 data points, returns. You have 373 returns. So the worst 1% is the 3.733 case. The C1, C0.73 is the item you are looking for. But I said don't go by interpolation. Approximate to the closest number. So what is the closest uh, point you should look? 3.73 closest whole number. What four. is that? Huh? Four. 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 Sorry? Four. I can't, uh, there's a little bit echo sound coming. What is the item? Item four, sir. Fourth. Fourth line. Fourth item. Right? So fourth item. So let's go to the fourth item. This is the fourth item. So what is the what? 1264. So 99% confidence level daily wa of this particular portfolio is 1264. So that means the maximum loss that you can you would incur in a particular day with 99% confidence is 1264. 99% confidence. But tell me, what is the VA using 90% confidence? 90% confidence. What is the VA? Tell me 90% confidence. 40. Sorry? What is the value? 90% confidence interval wa in this particular question. What is the value? 37th item. 37. What is the wa? I need a wa number. Like this. Number 40. Number 40 equal wa history. How do you get number 40? So what is the 90% confidence means? What? Worst 10%. Worst 10% of 373 is what? 
37.3. So the closest whole number is 37. So R is 609.25. Without interpolation, no? if you do interpolation, you will get a number between uh, these two, 37 and 38. But those are pretty small differences. Okay, tell me what is the 95% R? 5. Huh? 5. How much 95% R? What is 95% uh, R? And some month? 18.65. That is the item, but uh, what? 761. Sorry? 761.31. Yeah, so that is, if it is 18.6, uh, it is close to the uh, uh, 19 uh, number, so 761.31. So it's pretty simple. So if you use Excel sheet, you can change the numbers here. This is 99%. You can put 95%, that is 0 0.05. Okay, sorry. You get a wow of 761.32. If you look at 90%, that is 10% worst case. You will get 609.25 with 37 titles. So, if you work out Excel sheet, you can compute VAR for any given confidence level, 95%, 99%, 90% uh, and so on, without any problem, right? Clear? So, you should be ready with any question if you get to do like this in a portfolio. So, we did a question on... Uh, one asset, both historical simulation and variance covariance model. Now, this is the second question of a portfolio of three assets. So, if you are given five assets, you should be able to do the same thing. Right? Okay. <clears throat> Okay, let's move to the second method of uh, evaluation, variance, covariance analysis. But to do that, we need to compute what? Parametric variables. So what are the parametric variables? We use variance, covariance analysis. What are the things we use? Someone? Remember previous question? What are the things we use? What are the parameters for variance covariance model? Can someone tell? Mean and standard deviation of returns. Okay. Anything else? Okay. If it is a single asset, mean and standard deviation, but when you have a portfolio of assets, we need to have correlations also. Okay, single asset, mean and standard deviation would be enough, but if it's the portfolio, we need correlations as well. So how do you get the mean? 
we need the average of this mean of asset one mean of asset two is average of this column i mean of asset three is average of this column right Similarly, standard deviation is standard deviation of these returns. H in the H column, here standard deviation of these return in the I column, and standard deviation of these returns in the column, uh, column J. So we know mean, we know standard deviation, we know mean here, we know the standard deviation, we know the mean, we know the standard deviation. Now, how many correlations are there in this portfolio? The well, next thing is we need to compute the correlations. How many correlations? Can someone tell? Three. Three. What are the correlations? Between one and two, two and three, and one and three. Yeah, between 1 and 2, 2 and 3 and 1 and 3. So how do you get the correlation? You again use the correlation function. You can use the statistical uh, correlation function of 1 and 2. So the this return and this return, you get this number. If you want to compute between 2 and 3, you get Okay, this number, 2 and 3, this one and this one, because 2 and uh, 3 is this one, then 1 and 3, you get the correlation between this one and this one. So you end up with 1 and 2, 2 and 3, 1 and 3. Remember row, row signal? Correlation we did, uh, we, I explained to you today. Any questions so far? Anything? Sir, can you please show the formula in the bar historic color? Yeah, this one? Yes. Thank you, sir. It's simple because it is the portfolio return multiplied by the overall investment. Okay. Okay. Now let's move on to the variance covariance approach now we worked out historical simulation approach we know what is the value at risk for different confidence level if it is 90 percent confidence level our value at risk is 609.25 so let's see if we use the parametric model for the same data what is the situation? So let's go here and build up the correlation matrix.
okay so we have 10000 in asset 1 10000 in asset 2 10000 in asset 3 we know standard deviation from the previous uh, sheet 2.7096 4.0242, 2.3701. These are the standard deviation which we work out from the previous sheet. So, value at risk. From a standard deviation point of view, P17, total value, this one, ninety-five percent, ninety percent confidence level. The normal distribution value is one point two 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 eight two. 1.282 times C17 is standard deviation. So value at risk for the asset one using parametric model 347 at 90% confidence level. For asset two 5516, asset three. So absolute value at risk is also same. Okay, here. Yeah. So now let's build up the correlation matrix because we have three assets. So we we have a three by three matrix, three by three matrix. So you can expand to any number of assets. Don't. Don't worry about fourth and fifth because we don't have anything in the fourth and fifth. But you can add on anything if you need. So these numbers we did from, uh, got from the last uh, sheet. Four zero four seven six five five. Four four seven six six five between one and two. One and three, two seven eight six one seven, two six two seven eight six one seven. So this is same. One and two and two and one. Then two and three, we got this one negative o two three two eight, negative o two three two eight. So these are the numbers got from the previous sheet. So this is same as this. This is same as this. Then you got. One 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 here. How did you get one 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 here? What is this? What is this? How did you get one one one? Anyone? Correlation between the same entity one and one, two and two and three. Same method correlation. Because if you look at this one, the correlation between one and one, so same method is one. This one correlation between two and so its own correlation is one. Always own correlation is one with the own, you know. So that is one one one. So this is the correlation matrix three by three matrix. Okay. So the Individual value at risk we extracted from here three forty seven five one three three zero four. Okay. So if you look at individual bars, the worst case bar that can happen is individually, and if you add together three four seven plus five one six plus three zero four, so that is uh, individually. Remember, uh, we looked at the individual Microsoft and AT AT and T. So all together come to one two six seven, the combination of these three, right? But now look at the diversified portfolio. 
that is now since we don't we have a portfolio so let's look at the portfolio over at 90% confidence level 90% How much so you have to run a multivariate function so formula is given here if you put the formula excel sheet will give you the number use this formula multivariate function remember put the formula rightly you see the formula So our portfolio is 740. So what did you get? Now this is using the variance covariance model. I'll put it here 740. So how much we got under the historical VA, 90% confidence level? Six hundred nine point two five. Six hundred nine point two five. Right? Is there any difference? Is there any difference? I'm asking, is there a difference? Is there any difference? Is there any difference? Simple question I ask. Now this is covariance, variance, covariance, parametric model VA at 90% confidence level for this particular investment in three assets. This is simulation, uh, sorry, historical simulation VA. Is there a difference? Can we hear from you all? No? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay, there's a difference. So what is the possibility? Why is that difference? What could be the possibility? Correlation. Huh? Effect of correlation. Correlation? Uh, oh, oh, okay. Correlation is applied whether you have a correlation between any method that is there, no? But when we with any method, it can be there, but uh, uh, you know, why get two results under two different methods? Because data do not follow normal distribution. Yeah. So in the covariance variance analysis, we assume normal distribution function and random variables. The returns are random and follows a linear normal distribution function. So probably if there is any change to that effect, this may deviate from the historical simulation. Of course, remember last question I showed you here. This is 
there is a problem because of cortosis is not close to zero. If you have a fairly comfortable uh, normal distribution function with uh, linear random variables, then this cortosis should be equal to uh, close to zero. So in this particular question, we haven't looked at, but that could be the possible reason. That could be the possible reason. Right? Okay, let me ask question. Right. So here, zero, one, four, nine, six. But if I change it, let's say fifteen thousand. Zero point zero one four nine six. So that is my return. If I change the portfolio structure, then I'll make it 15,000. And I'll make it 5,000. Then what happens? This is what happens. My portfolio return now this much. You see, now early on the equal, equal uh, distribution, I got a portfolio return of 0.1496, but now my return is 0 0.015708. Because I increased my, this portfolio and reduced this portfolio. But if you look at the return perspective, asset two gives a higher return compared to the asset three. So as a result, I have ended up with a better portfolio return. Right? So now you have to rearrange this ascending order from the new data and compute the value. Right. So that's how you can do the calculations. Again, all these uh, numbers will change accordingly because of the numbers change here. because of the changes of these numbers, right? So you can plug in any portfolio, structure the portfolio, you can add, you can remove, you can change, and you can compute the value at risk using the historical model, as well as various covariance approach. So if you change the structure, now earlier it was 740, now value at risk using variance covariance method would be 890. Earlier it was 740, I think we, uh, we got the number here, 740. So now we 
Okay. So if you don't have any questions, we'll stop for the day. But remember, next time, next week, be ready. We go for Monte Carlo simulation. That is a little bit difficult. Before run. So you must be very thorough. Be in the class and get thorough with how do we do it. Okay. These two are pretty simple data because they are we running computer mod computer simulations. So you should be very thorough. How do we run the computer simulations? Okay, so if you don't know run simulation, then you will get a uh, quite uh, you know different uh, results. So be ready with laptops, your Excel sheets. Please keep these safe for your future references for your exam purposes, so that uh, there won't be any problems. So you should be thorough with any portfolio workouts with a three assets, four assets, five assets. And do the historical as well as uh, variance, covariance, uh, relevant risk model. Okay, so we'll stop there and we'll meet uh, next week with uh, uh, Monte Carlo simulation. Again, please be ready with your Excel sheets and the laptops.